I don't know about you, but I feel like I'm addicted to things. I like buying all sorts of things. Functional things, useless things, things that make sounds, things that don't. Small things, big things, even things you can eat. I don't know, I just really love things. Look, I think it's kind of a waste of time to bore you with the details on all the specs on the Lumix S52X because if you're familiar with the Lumix S5 Mark II, this is essentially the exact same camera. I feel like this is probably the easiest review to make because we've just taken a Lumix S5 II and now made it matte black pretty much all over. And we've added a couple bells and whistles like ProRes RAW, B-RAW, and I don't know, a bunch of other shit. Anyways, that's the end of the video. Uh, if you like the S5 II, you're gonna like the S52X because it's, uh, it's all black now, which is cool. It looks sweet. Nice looking camera. Good job, Lumix. Cheers. I'm just kidding, I'm not gonna let you go that easy. You're gonna stare at my face a little bit longer because I think this is a good opportunity to talk about what I think about the Lumix S5 II overall because I've had some time to play with it now. Like I said in my original review, which I suggest watching because I don't wanna go over a bunch of the same things again. I like this camera a lot. There's so much to love about these cameras. In fact, I've had the S5 II for a few months and it's become my main number one A cam for YouTube. I shoot all of my YouTube videos on my main channel with the Lumix S5 II. And so for about the week that I've had the S5 II, X, yeah, it's still just as good. I think it's really sweet. The thing looks black now. It's a nice looking camera. A lot of us, if you work with clients and you do professional work, you like to matte black out or put some gaff tape on your logos anyway. So it's nice that from factory, this thing is just all sleek and sexy. It's a good looking camera, I won't lie. Now it's not all just aesthetics. They've also added some features that are quite handy and useful for a lot of shooters. The first of which is raw video recording. Now this is something that is coming to the S5 II as well, but it will be a paid firmware update. So that's gonna be a big thing with the question of this camera is, do you wanna pay the extra money down the road with the S5 II should you need RAW, like Blackmagic RAW or ProRes RAW, or do you just wanna get it over with out of the gate by getting the S52X, which is all enabled right from factory. Now, personally speaking, RAW is not something I typically need with a mirrorless camera. If you're using this for YouTube or even client work, it is very rare that I need RAW. In fact, I'm using H.265 even for my commercial clients. I really love H.265 and the codecs in these cameras now are just so damn good that they aren't gonna fall apart when you start grading. The bit rates are fantastic. Now, you might need RAW video, but I would say if you're at that level already where you're shooting clients, you, you know, you're probably renting cameras. I don't know if you're really buying a $2,000 mirrorless camera. This is really a creator-focused camera camera, but not a commercial cinema camera. It's not to say you can't use it as a cinema camera. I talk about this all the time. Any camera can be a cinema camera. Your iPhone can be a cinema camera. It's what you shoot, not how you shoot it or what you shoot it on. That's all that matters. So with that in mind, maybe it's nice to future-proof yourself if you get to a point in leveling your career where you know a client needs raw or the post-production team needs some raw video flexibility. It's already gonna be built in. It's not something you need to worry about. You'll just need an external recorder. You also get SSD recording, which I think is a huge time saver if you're someone who shoots and edits yourself. The fact that you can just film directly to the SSD and then put that SSD in your computer and start editing right away. It's just a real nice workflow convenience. As you saw in that little short film that I made, you know, the image quality of this camera is wonderful. I do think it has an edge over every other mirrorless camera now, outside of maybe Canon, because I do think the C70 and even the R5C has a really nice look to those cameras and the image and the quality and the color is nice. But I will say I much prefer the image coming out of the Lumix cameras than my Sony's. I just think Vlog is a really nice profile to work with. It has a bit of that cinema look, which I hate to say, but it feels like a camera that is betting way above its price class and product category. And that's where the comparisons with Sony get a little interesting, because I do use the FX30 for most of my client work. And I honestly think most of it is an aesthetic aesthetic reason. I like that this camera doesn't look like a mirrorless camera. I like that it looks like a camera that is made for professional video work. I'm a little bit tired of grabbing mirrorless photo bodies to shoot video with. I keep telling Lumix, trust me, I'm telling them all the time, every time I see them, every time I talk to them, please just make either a cube or make a cinema camera that just looks different from your typical mirrorless video cameras. Call me superficial, call me shallow, but I just do not want to show up on a set anymore with a photo body camera to shoot video. It's just not in my cards. I'm sorry. So yes, it's nice that this camera is now all blacked out and it looks sweet, but I still think it looks too much like a photo camera when it really is a baller video camera. Where I think this camera definitely eats Sony's lunch is with that ZV-E1 piece of shit. Like, what are you doing with that camera? They're going after vloggers with a $2,500 or $2,300 USD camera that it will overheat, it's cheap, it's plastic, it's small. 
Grab an S5 II, grab an S52X for essentially the same price. This can do so much more for you as a filmmaker, as a creator, as a YouTube. Whatever you do with a camera, that is a much better investment long term. The S52s are not going to overheat with you. They have way more features than the ZVE1. Things like open gate shooting. If you do a lot of vertical work, I shoot all of my YouTube videos on my main channel in open gate so I can then crop them into vertical versions very easily. Shutter angle, which will let you shoot from 24 to 60 to 30 without ever having to change your shutter speed because 180 degrees works on all of those frame rates. It's so much easier when you're shooting on the fly to not deal with that. That is the bane of my existence on Sony cameras. There is not another camera on the market that I have used that has IBIS quite like the S5 II and S5 II X. This thing is just buttery smooth. It's also a much more capable photo camera than that ZV-E1, which is only 12 megapixels. So if you need a nice full frame photo camera, you're not gonna be using that ZV-E1 for much other than social media. So you're gonna have a professional hybrid mirrorless camera for roughly the same price that is like 10 times better than that ZV-E1. I really don't understand the hype on that camera. I think it's a real piece of shit. Sorry, but that is not the one to buy this year. Definitely go with something like the S5 II or S5 II X or even grab an FX30 over that ZV-E1. So should you buy this camera? That's the big question. I think if you already have an S5 II, definitely don't upgrade to the S5 II X. Just wait for that firmware upgrade or you might not even need much of the features that came on the S5 II X. And if you are a Sony shooter now, should you switch over to the Lumix system? I don't think so, but if you need an extra camera, a B or a C cam, I cannot recommend these cameras enough. They are a dream to shoot with. They make amazing images. They're fun to use. They look great. The quality is fantastic and it has every bell and whistle you are currently missing on your Sony camera. I just can't in good conscience ask you to switch ecosystems altogether because that's a massive investment. And I am more interested to see what they do next now that they have this phase detect autofocus system because I'm more curious about the cameras to come than the cameras that we currently have. But overall, the S5 II and S5 II X are really, really great cameras. I love using them. I'm gonna keep using them. And like I said, I'm just really excited about what Lumix is doing because I like that they're trying to eat into everybody else's lunch. They have this underdog mentality that they're fighting really hard to get back into the mindset of consumers since the GH4, GH5, and that is exciting because it makes everyone else jump back on their heels a little bit and be like, oh shit. Honestly, it's just hard for me to talk cameras anymore. Like I said, they're just all so good now that I can't tell you not to buy one or buy one or do this or do that. You can't go wrong. So if you buy an S5 II or an S5 II X, you buy an A7 IV, you buy an FX3, an FX30, you buy a C70, whatever you end up buying, you're gonna do great because that's all that matters. It's you, it's not the body, it's not the camera, it's not even the lenses. Learn things, don't buy things. What I always suggest is only buy something if it's going to remove a barrier between you, your idea, and putting it on screen. So if this is the camera for you, then that's the one that's gonna work, that's great. If it's not, that's okay too. But never expect a camera to make you a better filmmaker or a creator, because it just won't happen. You gotta find that shit up here. But I hope you like this video and the little short film we made. This has been the S52X. My name is Patrick, and you will see or hear me next time I feel like making a video. Cheers. Thank you.